<laughs> oh my goodness, guys. This phone, I swear to God, I'm going to stomp on it one day. Oh, it keeps cutting me off. I've been trying to film this so many times. I'm going to say the same thing over and over again. I need your opinion. I need your help. I need your thoughts. So, let's start from the beginning again. So, my uh, dog is sick and she needs surgery and I don't have the money for that so I desperately trying to get my paws on a shit ton of money uh, I've been talking to the tax office and stuff and here's the thing that not even all Swedish people know is that handmade items such as a turtle or a player house or jewelry or whatever handmade things you have to pay taxes from the first little money that you make and those taxes were pretty hefty. Uh, I talked to them on the phone and they said um, there's 30% like regular tax and then about 20% in social fees. And I'm like, that's 50% tax. And she said, yeah, that's, that's the thing. As a private seller, if you sell stuff like this, you have to pay 50% tax. And I'm like, what? Because most of us uh, in Sweden, we hear, um, uh, sorry, I got a message, got distracted. We hear uh, of the free sum. You, you can earn up to a certain sum before you start having to pay tax. That does not apply for handmade stuff. And not all Swedish people know that. So if I sell like, let's say I sell my coffee cup, you know, that's a, ha that's a used secondhand stuff, something I've owned. I don't have to pay taxes to sell it until I make over 50,000 Swedish crowns, which is about 5,000 US dollars. But when it comes to craft, I have to pay 50% tax from day one. But I can deduct costs. Anyway, so my dog needs vet. Go to the vet. She needs surgery. Uh, it's going to cost a shit ton of money. First sum I got, she told me, was 15,000 Swedish crowns. That's about $1,500. It's a shit ton of money. I had no clue what to do. So I freaked out. I panicked. I talked to friends. I was like, oh, I'm going to do. What am I going to do? And I was crying. And I was, you know, it's horrible. She's my best friend. She's my everything. And, um, and I mean, I know she's old. I know she's living on kind of borrowed town and stuff like that. But it's still tough. And after crying for, uh, I think, two days or something, I went into full focus fix mode. Um, I'm like, I'm going to fix this. Okay, we're going to find a solution. So I started to talk to friends that are good at kicking my bum and find them, you know, do this, we fix this, we can, you know, all of that. You know who you are. Thank you so much for you. Um, So... And in that in that kind of same time period, I was posting new stuff because I keep selling at Tradera, the Swedish sales site that is about a bit like eBay. I have auctions there. Um, oh, speaking of that, speaking of that, ooh, we're going to interrupt it a little bit. Um, remember this one? This guy here the, that I fixed that I, you know, fixed the links on. Wow, why are you turning around? Why are you turning around? Stop doing that. There we go. So, this guy. Uh, sold for a dollar. Uh, I set the ar first asking price on the auction was a dollar. And no one bid. Uh, I got a bid on it. And no one bid against. So, this one went for a dollar. So, I'm going to ship it out tomorrow. Because tomorrow is Monday. Sunday today when I'm filming this. Uh, I'm pulling up my sleeve. Ooh. Okay. So, taxes on handmade stuff is high. Secondhand stuff, I don't have to pay taxes for a long time. I'm not making that kind of money on my secondhand stuff. I made like so far combined this year on uh, 400 auctions, give take. Uh, I have earned 2,000 Swedish crowns, which is about $200. It has helped in help put some food on my table and stuff like that so i'm not gonna snarl at it but 
like that one sold for a dollar today i had 13 auctions that went out and this one sold for a dollar i have another one that has a bid for one and a half dollar and another one that's a dollar so that's what i'll be making so three and a half dollars today not massive income at all when you need when you need one thousand five hundred dollars that's um what i need for the wet bill that's what she said at first then we started talking some some more and since she's an older dog and she's gonna need some uh you know they need to do good blood work they need to check her hips that she's even you know uh, good to to operate and we were talking about her teeth and since if they're gonna sedate her they might as well do her teeth as well so we don't have to do the sedation several times and with everything and she said she, she might gonna need an x-ray and she's gonna need this and that and so on and she said you have to count around thirty thousand swedish crowns so around three thousand dollars and i was like <coughs> but i figure let's start with you know just finding out what kind of shape she's in if she's even going to be able to do surgery before we take the next step so right now i'm just trying to get that first bit of money this month i can't even pay my bills so my ex is stepping in to help me pay my bills again poor guy oh i wish i could just give him a mustang or something he loves mustang cars and i just wish i could afford to give him a mustang for all the help he's done me anyway um so i was thinking shall i send my, sell my handmade stuff on etsy or shall i go on ebay and sell secondhand and handmade stuff because you can sell both and then i realized ebay i can sell vintage stuff on 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 etsy and ebay so i was like what shall i do so i started to do some math i'm not good at math but if i if i sell a wand I have issues with this. I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, if I sell a wand, um, let's say 25 bucks uh, on Etsy and pay half of that in tax, I still make more money on this than I do on like a dollar DVD. You know, even though that dollar is tax free, I, that's still just a dollar, but half of this is, is like it's a lot more. Um, after fees or something i think maybe ten dollars if i you know so what i did i started an etsy so i'm on etsy guys i'm on etsy i'm gonna leave the link down below but don't go don't go away don't go yet don't go yet don't go yet i still need your help with a few things your advice i need your advice so like i said vintage stuff i can sell both on etsy and on ebay and i started an etsy already now vintage stuff like this what do you think should i put this up on etsy or should i put this up on ebay on etsy you set a fixed price uh, i want this and that for, for this and i'll set it set it for a set price on ebay i can set it as an auction and maybe just maybe get a little bit more for it but then again, I don't know exactly know what the ship it would be for this. So maybe it's not even worth doing that because people will run away due to the shipping. But then again, I might have some interesting, you know, porcelain and stuff, you know, Swedish porcelain and stuff that, that might be hard to get in the US or Greek or Greece or what, wherever. I don't know. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Shall I post, post vintage stuff on Etsy or shall I post them on eBay? That's my big question for you guys. That's what I need help with. Another thing I need help with is why the heck doesn't the paint stick? This is, I have never had this issue with this before. Now, um... These are polymer clay ones. Uh, I made them out of this and um, beads and put polymer clay on it. I have never had issue painting polymer clay before. I mean, look at this. Oh, not even a scratch. Nothing. This is painted. 
the top is painted. This is colored clay, but the top is painted. And it's not coming off at all. I'm trying not to drop it. It's not coming off. Never had this issue. I painted tons of these, but why? And this one, I put gesso on because I thought maybe that will help. But look at this. I'm like, you know those scratch tickets? You know, the lottery tickets? That's what it feels like. You just scrape it off. Um, this one I actually uh, burnt in the oven. And this was the first one I painted. So I figured maybe that's the reason why it started to come off. But this one I didn't, you know, bake too long. This one I did the perfect way and it's coming off. So I tried to put gesso on it and it still... What is going on? I never had issue painting uh, polymer clay with acrylics before. I am not selling these until I fix this problem. I need to find out what the heck is going on so I can fix this. Now, if you wonder what happened here, I dropped this hard on the floor. It went flying and it's kind of smacked like that. Um, so I broke like the clay around the bead. It's the same bead on top of them. So the clay broke. So I took a knife and just cut off the to make a straight edge and I need to make this fix this uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna use this uh, put in here to make the bead stick and bake it and put some more clay around here and use this again to make sure it sticks properly because this one went flying I, I always put in my wand uh, ads this is not the first time I'm making ones it's just the first time I'm actually using polymer clay for them um uh, I was put in for decorative use, you know, it, it's not it's not a toy. Uh, but I I can't sell ones that the paint isn't sticking to. You. Why isn't I, I mean, it's not just the ones. Look at this. Even my little turtle. My tortoise. My turtles are losing paint. Why? Isn't the acrylic paint sticking? It's always been sticking. I mean, this this works. These guys are working. Why why not this? I am I, I don't understand. Now I'm thinking this is a different this is female clay and this is sculpted three. Sculpted three is a very sticky clay, uh, so it contains a lot more oils, and maybe that's it. And if that's the issue, how do I fix it? How do I fix that? What paint shall I use? Because I can't honestly afford to buy any other kind of paints. But maybe if I can do a base layer of a different kind of paint and then use acrylics on top of that, maybe that could work. But I kind of need to find out what to use. I love this. I like this one. Took me a heck of a long time to make because the clay is so sticky. Um, but I don't understand why this one where I put gesso underneath doesn't stick either. Because I thought gesso would fix the problem, but it doesn't. It doesn't fix the problem. Now, I didn't do this scrape. I did. It, it is um, textured. I have the same texture on, on all the others too. I made that texture myself. So why isn't the paint sticking? And even, you know, if, if I make like this kind of, it's not sticking. I can't sell stuff that, that's like this. No way, no how I'm not doing that. So I need to fix this in order to sell them, in order to get money for my doggy. Anyway, so help with the paint, help with should I post vintage stuff on Etsy or should I post them on eBay? Please help. Please advise and also tell me why. That's what I needed help with. Now, let's move on to something else. So, I sold the necklace. So, let's show you what I posted. I haven't done much on my Etsy yet. No, I'm still work. It's still a work in progress. I haven't gone public with it yet. But I guess I'm doing that with this video. <laughs> I guess I'm doing this with this video. Um... With my with my Etsy, oh, and I'm going to say bye-bye now in case the phone shuts off. So just hope you have an amazing day. And I'm going to keep talking until the phone shuts off because it's been 
cutting me off like crazy. And I think I managed to say the most things. I'm trying to get money for the vet, uh, so I opened an Etsy and I'm thinking of selling vintage stuff on eBay and also other secondhand stuff on eBay. What's your advice? Shall I sell it on eBay or Etsy? I don't know. What I like about Etsy is when you put a post up, it stays for four months. I like that. On Tradera, I keep having to do the same thing like every week, every week, every week. Because the auctions are like most, most of them are seven days. So I have to do the same thing every week, every week, every week. Put new stuff up, put new stuff up. Or restart an auction or new stuff and restart an auction. And, and it's a lot of work for very little money. I like Etsy. It's like four months for that sum. It's like, it's less than I pay on Tradera, the, the posting fee. Then they have a lot of other fees too, but I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Anyway, um, so I want to show you a little bit what I have posted on my Etsy currently. I don't know why I did that. That's annoying. Anyway, um, so I want to show you what I have posted so far. I have still pictures and stuff that I still need to post. And I have a ton of stuff. So I posted this one. You've seen it before, I think. Um, it's a very unique piece of sea glass. I have never seen this pattern before, but obviously it has to be because... There's never just one piece. There's got to be at least more pieces with this pattern of that. I don't know if this is from a jar or uh, something, but you can see how see-through it is. And I try not to cover the back too much. It's just enough so to keep the glass in. And the sides are weaved. So this one is up there. Uh, this one I didn't put a, bail a chain or anything on. I'm thinking I might add that maybe, uh, or you can buy that as extra. I'm not sure yet, but I did post it just as this. Because I saw a lot of other people did that. So I figured I'd try. I'll try. So that was the one. And then we have... Oh, sorry. Got tangled in. Ah, so there we go. Then I have this one. This is one of my favorites. Uh, I have one almost like it uh, for myself. This is not a real malachite. Uh, it is a synthetic malachite, but it's still really pretty. I like that. And I weaved it with bare copper wire. So since this is bare copper wire, it will tarnish, but it is very easy to clean. You just use toothpaste. I use whitening toothpaste and a toothbrush and just cleans through it. You just have to rinse it really carefully afterwards so you don't leave toothpaste in the cracks. Uh, it's on a on a cotton string and the lock is handmade. Also bare copper. So I made this lock too. Um, so that one I have. I really, really love this string. I have this on practically all my necklaces and I love it. It's so comfortable. I'm one of those people. I put a necklace on and then I wear it for like days and days and days and days. So this is really comfortable. And they last pretty long too. So that's one up there. Let's grab the earrings that I just... Oops. Fiddle, fiddle with it. So these are a pair of steampunk inspired earrings. Um, can't really see. But the beads are dark brown. Um, they're glass beads. And as you can see the gear is a bit different. On the front. Oh this one. This one is front. This one is back. So flip it over. Um, and I have a little seed bead, brown seed bead at the bottom to match up. So these are up there. Then I have a little mermaid tail, also stuck in a pair of earrings. <laughs> I'm gonna, um, I was about to put this stuff away in a different place. So I just put everything in a box to move them over. Uh, so I have this mermaid tail with a glass, green glass bead. It's up there again with a cotton string. Again, with a handmade lock. Oops, that twisted a bit. Handmade lock. So this one is up there. I did this, uh, I don't remember when. I have two more of these, but different color beads. I haven't posted them yet. Um, I did this. There was some kind of month where they were supposed to make mermaid stuff. I'm just going to lay this on. I have two of these posted. And I have three of these posted. Uh, this is a gla black glass bead. These, I'm not 100% sure if these are real turquoise. 
uh, or not. Um, they have this sort of marbling, brown marbling in them. Uh, and there is a stone. I have been testing them, so there's some kind of stone anyway. I'm not 100% sure what stone, and I say that in the ad too. So I have posted two of these and three of these. Then we have a kitty. So this is a little rose quartz. Um, it looks almost like a uh, crystal, but it is rose quartz. It has slight pink to it. Um, it is wrapped in silver coated copper wire. And I, it's on this chain. I like this chain. It's not too ornate. It doesn't take away too much from the veil, but it still adds a bit of interest because of the texture. I really like this chain. I'm running out almost out of this chain and it has this one. Now you can make it shorter by hooking this one is in some of the other, you know, holes in the chain. Um, and this one is also double sided. I tried to make double sided when I wire wrap. Because, you know, when you move around, it flips and so on. So I try to make them double sided. Um, so anyway, this is a little rose quartz. Very uneven, you can see. Very uneven. And the back is kind of flat. I like it. It's soft and nice. Moving on. These pair of earrings are there. Also, it's the, again, steampunk inspired earrings. Um, not too much to say about them. Uh, I have this one up. This is one of three. I haven't posted the other two yet because they have different hand painted glass eye, dragon eye, um, tutorial by Ron Williams. And this part here is I made it from polymer clay. And this is a copper wire that I did a little acrylic painting on to make it look more matchy matchy. So this is a red eye. I have another one with a blue and another one with kind of a golden eye. I haven't posted those two yet. This one is up. And again, cotton copper, <laughs> cotton copper? That's a new thing. Cotton string, and it's gonna have a copper lock like the other ones have. It's gonna have one of these. I just haven't put it on yet. Uh, is that it? I think that was what I have up there right now. No, wait, 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 these, these two. These are there too. Uh, this is kind of boho inspired. I have a pair, yellow pair, but I haven't posted them yet. As you can see, they have two of these little discs at the bottom and they make a little dingly sound. I don't know if you will hear that, but they have a little slight cling sound to them. I think that's cute. And these beads are kind of color shifting a little bit between blue and green. I like that. I like that. Now they look almost green and now they look almost blue. So they're kind of color shifting. So uh, that was a little sneak peek on what I currently have on my Etsy. More is coming up. I'm going to leave the link down in the description.